winning three in a row in Eric Ten Hag's first three games as Manchester United manager. There was no chance in hell we were going to make that fall. But in today's video, let's discuss what players played well, ultimately who was at fault and what we learned in Manchester United's 2-2 draw against Aston Villa. Also, could Cristiano Ronaldo be on his way in a shock transfer to Atletico del Madrid? Well, let's discuss all this in the latest episode of Transfers FC. But starting off, let's start off with Manchester United's 2-2 draw against Aston Villa. As in today's game against Aston Villa, Manchester United really showed a Jekyll and Hyde performance. As in that first half, Manchester United absolutely dominated and destroyed Aston Villa. And thanks to a goal from Jadon Sancho and him creating the second goal with Marcus Rashford smashing it at Matty Cash, Manchester United were 2-0 up at half time and it looked like Manchester United were en route for a straightforward victory in Eric Ten Hag's fourth game as Manchester United manager. But as you know what happened, that, that was not the case as early in the second half, after the substitutions, Leon Bailey came on and he scored and after that goal, it was 2-1 to Manchester United but Aston Villa were back in the game, they had the impetus and United could not get in the races and obviously watching the game, you know what happened Right at the end, Aston Villa with the last kick of the game, they crossed the corner in and thanks to David De Gea being a poor modern day goalkeeper and that was the end of Eric Ten Hag's perfect start at Manchester United. But if you did think it was going to be all rosy and Manchester United were going to win every single game in pre-season, sorry, I think you need the reality check. Eric Ten Hag has come to Manchester United to get a Champions League football in the first place. Obviously, ultimately, we want to win league titles. But if you want to get Champions League football, all you have to do really is win more games than not. And that is what Eric Ten Hag is doing right now. In pre-season so far, Manchester United have played four games, won three of them, drawn one, scoring 13 goals in the process, conceding four. And if you look at these stats compared to our stats last year, United are clearly looking like a team that are able to win more games than not. And that is what you need to do to get in the Champions League. I think us Manchester United fans needed this reality check. United aren't ready to win every single game week in week out. Sorry, that is what teams that are trying to win league titles are doing. And currently with this being Eric Ten Hag's first season and us coming off our worst ever season. Sorry, we are not ready for a title charge. And if you expected perfection from Manchester United, well Rome was not built in three days. And certainly Eric Ten Hag, if he wants to build a title winning team at Manchester United, First, he'll need his players and he will also need a lot of time with those players. But talking about players, I want to talk about David De Gea. As I told you, David De Gea was ultimately at fault for the goal for Aston Villa, which made us ultimately draw the game. And I know a lot of Manchester United fans like to protect David De Gea, but sorry David, this is simply not on. This is not the first time you've done it in pre-season, as earlier in that same game, a same scenario happened, Aston Villa put a cross in from a corner, you completely missed the ball, they missed the goal and you really got lucky to not concede then. And it also happened earlier in pre-season pre against Melbourne Victory where Melbourne Victory crossed in a ball and you conceded from your near post in a corner and sorry David, I know you've been a brilliant servant for Manchester United but this right here from you not being able to claim your crosses, well this is not on. If you want to be a modern day goalkeeper and want to play for a modern day team that is trying to win league titles, you, you have to be able to do the fundamentals well. And a fundamental trait for a modern day goalkeeper is, a, is the ability to claim crosses. And David De Gea, I can see that you're trying to improve your distribution, you're sweeping more in preseason, you're trying to be a bit more vocal, but the inability to claim your crosses and just the pure rashness when you're trying to claim these crosses Sorry David Heyer, the way you are playing right now, it just does not look like you'll be Eric Ten Hag's long term goalkeeper. But talking about long term, let's talk about a player that will be part of Eric Ten Hag's long term plan and that will be Jadon Sancho. As I told you about Jadon Sancho, he scored the opening goal for us to put us 1-0 up against Aston Villa and with that goal, Jadon Sancho has 3 goals in the last 4 games. And I've been telling you about Jadon Sancho, man. 
my man is cooking and he's absolutely taking that right hand side and making it his own if we look at his stats in the game it shows that he's not only a player that gets the goals but he's involved in the overall play and the fact of the matter is the way Jadon Sancho is playing on that right hand side it just brings a smile to my face as this is the player that Manchester United have been hunting for years and if we look at the stats that he was producing in his last full season as a right winger in 42 games Sancho had 20 goals 20 assists meaning that he had a goal and assist every 80 minutes and if he could continue this level into the Premier League and bring those type of numbers that he was doing as his, in his last full season as a right winger 20 goals and 20 assists in the Premier League, Europa League, FA Cup and Carabao Cup. I mean, if you bring those numbers up on the table, Jadon Sancho, you will be Manchester United's long-term right winger. But with that being said, what are your thoughts on Manchester United's 2-2 draw against Aston Villa? Who do you think played well and who do you think ultimately was at fault for Manchester United's draw? But with that being said, now let's move on to Atletico Madrid coming in for Cristiano Ronaldo. Atletico Madrid's arch nemesis is potentially going to Atletico Madrid. Wait, surely that isn't the case. Well, as I told you in a video prior, it looks like that could be a possibility. And Duncan Castles has confirmed that. Cristiano Ronaldo has been receptive to the idea of returning to Madrid. In addition to Atletico providing a platform for him to compete in the Champions League and for the La Liga, he has been quite impressed by Diego Simeone's eagerness to work with him. Diego Simeone working with Cristiano Ronaldo at Atletico Madrid. What world are we living in? I mean, the fact that Duncan Castles has said this, this could actually be a possibility. And let's see what else he had to say on this. As he went on to say, Atletico Madrid have placed Antoine Griezmann on the transfer market as part of their attempt to bring Cristiano to the club. Atletico need to create space in their wage bill to accommodate Cristiano Ronaldo's salary and offered Griezmann last week potential employers including Paris Saint-Germain. So Atletico Madrid are shipping off Antoine Griezmann to make space for Cristiano Ronaldo. I mean, even if that is the case, why would Manchester United sell him? Well, it looks like we might not sell him, but potentially loan him for a year. As, according to reports, Manchester United asked Ronaldo to consider taking up an additional one-year option in his contract that was available for both sides. United will then sanction a one-year loan deal to a club in the Champions League. This is a bargaining chip that has been taken by Mendes and Ronaldo by surprise. But Manchester United sources say it has proposed and not been rejected so far. So if that report is right and the report earlier is right, I mean, if you add the two together with Atletico Madrid being in the Champions League and Ronaldo potentially wanting to go there, the fact that Atletico Madrid, the fact that Atletico Madrid are trying to clear up space for the wages, I mean, if Manchester United do loan Cristiano Ronaldo to Atletico Madrid, they would pay his wages. Atletico Madrid will not have to pay a transfer fee and potentially if Ronaldo does extend his contract at Manchester United by a further year that would mean that Ronaldo's contract would go up to 2024 and if he does take a year at Atletico Madrid that means Manchester United could potentially in one year's time have Cristiano Ronaldo return and play his one last year at Manchester United potentially in the Champions League. But with that being said, what are your thoughts on this Cristiano Ronaldo transfer to Atletico Madrid? Do you think this can happen? And if not, do you think he'll stay at Manchester United? But with that being said, that was the latest episode of Transfers FC. And if you did enjoy the video, you know what to do. Go down there and smash that like button for your boy. Consider subscribing to my channel as we are now on the road to 1,500 subscribers. And as I've told you many times before, any subscriber is massively appreciated. For now guys, I'm out. Peace.